Hello, welcome to another Photoshop video. For this image, we will be applying a way stronger golden hour light and also add some more contrast to this shot. So without much more talking, let's go. Here we are in the camera raw editor to do the basic raw adjustments. First off, let me change the profile to Adobe Landscape for more saturation. Then I want to go through the basic panel real quick. As I said, I want this image to be warm. So the first thing to do here is to simply play around with the white balance temperature. Making it warmer simply means to turn up the temperature, of course. So we can turn it up quite a bit in here, giving this fog some lovely golden light, as you can see. This works really, really good. Then let's focus a little on the exposure. Right now the histogram does look pretty good. We don't have overexposure and no underexposure. Still, I do want to recover the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to bring them down slightly just to get some more details in those brighter areas, just like that. And for some more contrast, we can bring down the shadows. We just need to pay close attention to the histogram to not underexpose anything. But that looks really good at this point. Now we can further increase the whites so we get some more brightness in here. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to add a little bit. And then let's also play around with the blacks. Here I'm going to increase them to kind of get a softer look on this shot, which works nice with a foggy scene like this. All right. And as you can see, after those basic adjustments, we do have a much warmer shot already. Let's continue. And I do want to add some overall clarity right away, just to give the shot some more detail. And of course, I want to bring up the vibrance and maybe even the saturation a bit. All right, that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's apply a few local adjustments. I do want to make the sky darker. And in this case, that's really easy since the sky has this separate blue color tone, which we can easily target using the color range mask right here. With this one selected, I'm simply heading into this image and click in the sky. That's a pretty good selection already. We could make it a little softer by increasing the slider right here. All right, this selection is going a little too far towards the center of this shot. I really only like the top part of the sky to be a bit darker. So I'm going to use the subtract button right here and let's say linear gradient. Now I'm just erasing a part from the bottom of this mask like this. I only want the top to be darker, so that's the only area I need. All right. And with this mask, let's bring down the exposure. Let's bring it down quite a bit. All right, that looks awesome. And while we're at it, we could make the sky up there a little colder by turning down the temperature, giving it a stronger blue color tone. Just like that. Then let's also add a linear gradient on the foreground. Let's see, I do want to have only the very near foreground selected like this. In here, I'd like to raise the contrast. I also want to have some highlights in here. So I'm going to bring them up all the way. And for even more contrast, again, I'm bringing down the shadows. Perfect. Maybe let's adjust that linear gradient a bit, bringing it further up into the image. All right. And finally, I do want to apply a radial gradient just over the foggy part like this. And in here, I want to increase the clarity just so we can see those light rays a little better. All right, that looks awesome. Then that's it for the local adjustments. Let's focus on the color grading. And I'm starting in the color mixer tab with the hue. Here I want to bring down the yellow hue a bit, giving this image some more orange tones. Okay, and we could even bring down the blue tones very, very slightly. All right, and in the saturation tab, let's bring up the orange tones just like that. And finally, in the luminance tab, I also want to boost the orange luminance. And I'm dropping the blue luminance, which will make the sky a little darker. Perfect, that looks pretty good. And finally, let's do the split toning. Yeah, I only want to affect the highlights and the midtones. For both of them, I'm going to use a warm color tone. 
somewhere in the yellow range like this. The saturation might be a bit too much, so let's bring it down. That looks pretty good. Let's do the same on the midtones, somewhere in the yellow range. And again, let's bring down the saturation, of course. Perfect. And that's it for the raw adjustments. We could maybe sharpen this image a little bit. But now let's open up the shot in Photoshop. All right, there's not much left to do, but first off, let me add a new layer. And then let's switch the blending mode to soft light. Grab the brush tool by pressing B. Then I'm holding down the Alt key to pick up a color tone from this part, just like that. And I'm also bringing down the brush opacity. So with this setup, I'm going to add a little bit of glow by just carefully painting in a few times in here. It's a very, very subtle effect, but it looks quite good on this shot. All right. Then I do want to specifically target the highlights in the foreground. Therefore, we need another new layer. This time we are going with the overlay blending mode and I'm using the TK panel plugin to specific target those bright spots in the foreground. I just need to find the right luminosity mask for this. I think the lights to mask will work quite good. So let's add it as a layer mask. And again, with the brush tool and the foreground color set to white, I am going to paint in some more brightness in here. Perfect, that's enough already. Then I'm going to merge those layers real quick. And at this point, I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin. So first off, we could use the polarization effect. Let's play around with the strength a bit. It looks good in the foreground, but the sky starts to look very, very strange, I guess. So let's just add a negative control point over the blue part of the sky, just like that. Okay, and then let's add another filter. And I do want to try the pro contrast one, just adding some more dynamic contrast to the shot. That looks really, really good. So let's apply it like this. Awesome, and here we have the finished image. That was super quick and super easy. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.